you know, where we, we talk about our feelings, um, you're weak and you're not gonna make it or something. Um, but trauma is real. And one of the things I wanted to talk about really in terms of traumatized youth is that first what like trauma isn't because it, it gets hard to define sometimes trauma. So for me and my people, that okay, I would like to say that trauma isn't something that happens to other people. Uh, trauma is something that can happen to all people. And sometimes we have the perception that it's other people that that happens to. Um, that somehow being Somali or being Muslim protects us from trauma and that we are immune to it, but that's not true. We're not immune to it, um, and we're human beings. And anything that really other human beings can experience, we do too. And I think in particular, especially since a lot of us, um, our parents experienced a civil war, and they experienced displacement and had to start over in different countries and then had to raise their children in different countries that was unfamiliar to them. Um, a lot of trauma occurred that way. I came to this country again at the age of 12 years old and I think some of us can remember maybe when we were 12 how awkward it is and how you just try to fit in and you're just an adolescent and things are changing and if you don't really know why they're changing, it can cause a lot of confusion and a lot of distress within you. Uh, there are certain expectations on you in the society that you live in, and there are certain expectations on you at home. And there are changes happening in your body and in your mind that you may or may not understand. So adolescence is just in itself kind of like a traumatic time. So on, add on top of that, uh, maybe your parents' civil, uh, civil war and displacement can exasperate the situation and make it even more stressful. I need a little breather. <laughs> okay, so trauma isn't something that happens to other people. It is something that can happen to us. Our body has basically an alarm system, and the alarm system tells us when something is wrong. It recognizes real or perceived danger. Whether the danger is real or whether you think it's real, it's the same alarm system, right? It produces physiological responses in your body, things happen in your body, and also produces obviously psychological responses where you tell yourself, something is wrong, I'm in danger, help. Um, so this alarm system um, can go off if you're stuck in traffic, or maybe you guys are nice in traffic, but you're in the classroom and the teacher gives you um, a question and say, hey, so-and-so answer. Or this alarm system can also go off when you have real big problems like tra trauma or physical, sexual, you know, abuse. So the trauma response, whether the um, situation is real or perceived, or whether it's small or you t you're nervous, like I am right now, <laughs> or, you know, you have real danger, the trauma response, the alarm system in our body is the same. Now the thing is that the alarm system is not all bad and it helped us. It helps us you know, recognize danger and save ourselves. The problem is when we have a constant alarm system. Has the smoke alarm gone off in your apartment before? And it just goes in your house or your apartment, it goes on and on, it's like so irritating. Well this alarm system that goes on in our body it has a specific, res remember, it has a specific reason, but when it persistently goes off, it creates problems within you and it can have dire health consequences. Right? It can make you sick. So this is when we talk about stress makes you sick. Okay, so this is when we get to anxiety and depression and maybe some other big health issues, let's say heart problems, etc. Okay? And you can imagine, or we came from another country, we're starting over. Um, our children are trying to get used to the new place. And children usually are much more resilient and they usually adapt easier. But there's resistance a lot of times on our family's part, our parents' part, to adapt to this new country. And this causes some sort of conflict in the home where maybe as a young person you just want to fit in at school, you don't want to stand out, you just want to go with the flow, but at home you're expected to be a certain way and this constant change of how you're supposed to be in this greater society and how your family and your insular Somali community expects you to be can create some sort of conflict. And again, in this adolescence period, you're also trying to figure out who you are and where your place is in the world. So I was 12 years old when I came and I was starting seventh grade 
And um, I had education at that point too. I started schooling when I was like in the first grade. So school wasn't new to me, but this new environment was new to me. And being an adolescent was new to me. So there again, adolescence is a change within our physical change, cognitive change, emotional change, and social change, okay? So what I'm trying to do in the seventh grade is I'm trying to fit in. And what my parents are trying to do is probably survive this new place, um, survive and feed their children. And my parents really want to hold on to their Somali culture and their religion because it's very important to them, as you know, right? But what's important to me as an adolescent is fitting in and surviving this new environment that I'm in. And I think a lot of you can probably <laughs> relate to that. If you are close to adolescence or if you have if you're older, you obviously have been an adolescent, okay? So one thing that sometimes, I'm a parent, I have a 13-year-old boy, and I really try to understand and not project my ideas onto him because I'm in a different stage of life, okay? The things that are important to him, I've already passed that. So my son likes to talk about his video games. Hoya, let me tell you something exciting that happened. Just now, before I left, he was talking about Minecraft. That's his world, okay? So one thing that sometimes that happens is because we're traumatized, because we're trying to survive, we project adult problems onto children. Children that just aren't equipped yet. They can't handle that. Their mind isn't ready to handle that. They're just too young, okay? So when you're 13, you're worried about Minecraft, you're worried about friends, you're worried about texting, you're worried about what's on social media, and hopefully, as a teacher, I hope you're worried about your grades too and that you care about your education. But that's the extent of your worry because your world is still small and you're in training to be an adult. You're not an adult yet. Um, so that's just kind of like the difference between adolescents and adults and just that generational divide that's normal anyways. Even if we would have been in Somalia, we wouldn't live the way our parents lived because each generation is different and comes with different changes, okay? But now, not only do we have a generational divide, we are also growing up in a different country from our parents. And there's this conflict, this identity conflict at home and personally, I think the girls experience it a little bit more, but not to say that the boys don't. What happens to the boys a lot of time is actually they're left to figure it out on their own. Right? When girls are kept at home and mom keeps her close because joked why you have to stay home, you gotta cook and clean. And that's when the boys really get in trouble. They still need structure, even if this tall six foot young man cognitively, Miskahdi said he's still a young person who hasn't figured it out yet. This is still a child. And, you know, maybe not a child, okay, an adolescent, because they don't like to be called a child once they're like 13 after. But they're not adults, they're in training to be an adult. So if you're a young person, you're still in high school, you're not quite an adult yet, you're in training. You need support, and what you most importantly need is structure. Okay, you need your parents to be so my name is Kayla Davis. I'm with Columbus Public Health. So I am with the harm reduction side of our Columbus Public Health. And I'm going to talk today about healthy engagement. So we talked about trauma and how things we deal with in our lives um, deal with our trauma and how we handle it. Well, a big sign of addiction is our trauma. So a lot of people deal with trauma in their past in now with addiction. So what happens is they pick a drug of choice to help them deal or cope with their feelings because they don't know how to cope with it. So one of the things that um, we brought was another little ball. So what happens is, is this is a great thing to look at and kind of ideally think about because it helps you deal with different aspects of it. So one of the questions or one of the things on here is name something creative you like to do. So something creative I like to do is do outreach. So I like to do different things like this, like speaking engagements, uh, cooking dinner for the homeless. That's things that when I am sad or I am down or I don't know how to deal with my emotions because I'm so stressed out in life, it helps me deal with that aspect of it. Um, I come from an addictive background, so my mom is an addict right now. My father is an alcoholic. I've done with, I'm 28, so I've dealt with this probably for about 15 years. So I get to see that secondhand aspect of it. So I've seen my mother overdose over five times and that really takes a heart. So, you know, obviously addiction and overdoses is a hard conversation to have, but it is a conversation we need to have. Um, and that's one of the big things to have is find somebody that you feel comfortable having that conversation with, whether it's me, I have a team of five that we do harm reduction with. 
um, whether that's a friend, a family member, somebody that you really feel comfortable having that conversation. That's not going to be judgmental with while you're dealing with coping with things, especially with coming to a new country, dealing with trying to fit into a new school, things like that. You really want to feel that aspect of how you feel comfortable coping, whether that's a hobby. So if you like to cook, if you like to do art, I love to do art. I'm not great at it, but it, it makes me feel some type of way when I get there. Um, I like to use this ball again. Let's look at, you know, what is a good coping skill for you? So again, that could be singing, that could be writing. I know a lot of people like to write poetry, write in a journal. That helps you get your words out that you don't know how to speak about it onto paper. And then, you know, maybe come back to that in a couple of days and look at it at another perspective and then take it to a friend and say, you know, help me figure this out on how I'm supposed to handle it. The biggest thing right now with um, the situation and topic at hand is learning how to discuss it. It's always a hard topic to have. My job in the community is having the tough discussions with people that don't want to have the conversation. Um, and you know, that may be running into somebody that is an addict on the streets and us just offering Narcan to them and saying, hey, we know you're not ready for treatment, but here's Narcan so we can save your life or you can save somebody else's life. And that's the key here is having the conversation and being able to save the life. We don't wanna have, um, you know, our young people in the Somali community having any more deaths than what it is. You know, as of right now, um, overdoses are at extreme high and we really don't want that to hit our youth, especially in the 16 to 24 year age. Um, right now, it's it's all over the place. It's all over Columbus. It's the age range, the demographic, everything's all over the place. So we wanna make sure that we're learning ourselves how to cope with it, whether that's you know talking to us, talking to a friend, researching it, finding something that you like to do yourself, and then having that conversation. You know, it's hard to have a conversation with a parent, an adult, someone like that, but that's why we come into hand and we can have that conversation or Sam, She's also very um, in tune with working with youth and she can have that conversation with you and help you learn how to have that coping skills. Any questions? Has anybody ever seen an overdose before? Just quietly, you can raise your hand. Okay, so if you have any comments or questions um, about prevention, harm reduction, feel free to, I will be happy to talk to you on the side um, if you don't feel comfortable um, while we're here. Um, to give you some pointers, some different ideas on wh how to cope with different things. Yes. How can people access Narcan? So Narcan can only be accessed for 18 year olds right now. So you can either get it through the health department. So we have a um, flyer up here now. You can get that mailed to your house with no charge through the Columbus Public Health, um, but you do have to be the age of 18. So it's just your first, your last name and your address. We will mail it to you. It takes about seven to 10 business days. Um, I also have Narcan on hand. So if anybody is over the age of 18, I can show you how to use it here today. You can walk away with it and with a couple instructions for you also. Um, and we can do that after um, we get through the program. So Narcan is when somebody has already overdosed and they're already in that state where they're, you know, they're going out, Narcan is to bring them back up. So that's to save an overdose. Sometimes depending on where they're at, like if they're, uh, if they are a continuous addict and they use very rarely, they will may need a couple. But if it's just one time use, they only need one Narcan use and it's very easy. It's just a nasal spray. Um, so again, if you have any questions, I can also sign us up for you. Already. Um, hi, I'm Sam. First, I think I'd like to introduce, I think is it, it Hebu Noor. Um, can you come up and just tell them a little bit about um, the information you wanted to tell them about flu shots and um, testing, location changes? Assalamu okay. alaikum. Magaigua Hibanur, Hashakaya, Wacha Afmat Columbus, Columbus Public Health, Wahan Rebeina Idin Shego, Waha Bilame, a flu shot key, Wachtigi flu shotka, and this year an ad boom himu yahe in flu shot calagato, so to as we know, COVID nineteen, K, you flu shot cardes, a flu gade scooter saman, with no one ya and Arin Ado Adak, Merkawa Hadishia, Warago Halkane, and flu shot Kyogo Turchuman, that key of Somalia. So, in Greece, in a while, here, 
waxa kale oo ay idin sheegi laha ee covid 19 testing hadda waxa lagu sameeyay jiray downtown 240 Parsons Avenue hadda waxa loo bedelay fair ground so anybody who interested in uh, covid 19 iska test gareeyo hadda waxa lagu sameeyay fair ground so please uh, walidkiina iyo dariskiina u sheega and it's really important in our and flu shot ka samaysa hadda insurance leedin iyo hadda idaal hayba wala talaalaya dadka salaam alaykum We have some other information on the table as well, talking about some of the different programs we have at the health department. Um, I'm here today to talk about mental health and drug abuse and how they kind of go hand to hand, talk about addiction a little bit. Um, some of the stuff that's already been shared, talking about trauma, talking about the differences in a family, um, that has a big impact and I think we don't talk about that enough. Um, I grew up in an alcoholic family. My dad was an alcoholic. I loved my dad. He was so fun and he was so kind. My mom, who didn't drink at all, was, this is being recorded, I should think about that. Hopefully she doesn't see this. She wasn't very nice, um, but she wasn't very nice because she was dealing with an alcoholic husband and the changes that happen in the family as a result of that. And me as a little girl, I just saw my fun father and my mom yelling at him and I didn't understand what that meant. Um, I, as I grew up, that made me learn some unhealthy things. It, it made me learn, don't talk about what's happening in your home, right? Don't let people get too close to you. I always thought my dad, um, just, he just loved my mom. I thought he was so in love with her. So I thought love is what makes you weak. Don't love people because that gives them power over you. So I learned a, a lot of unhealthy things by watching their relationship and not understanding that it's really the addiction piece that caused those issues, right? And so in the families that you are growing up in and the changes that are happening when you are coming from people who are exposed to different cultures, there's gonna be a lot of disagreements that happen as a result of that. A lot of misunderstandings, a lot of miscommunications and what I know from being from a family that doesn't talk about things, that that is not healthy. That we can't just pretend to not look at things. We can't just not discuss things. I do prevention for Columbus Public Health, which means I go into schools and I meet with kids and I talk to them about the things happening in their lives, the things happening in schools and happening at home, and how they can make good choices around that, right? So I talk about drugs and alcohol. And that doesn't mean because I teach them what these drugs might be, that they're going to use that. Right? We have this false sense that if we teach people about things, that means they're going to do them. And that is just not true. Scientifically, it's not proven. Actually, it's the opposite. When families begin to talk about what's happening with them, kids are less likely to do things. The most powerful indicator of a child not using drugs or alcohol is a conversation with parents about drugs and alcohol. Right? And we don't talk about that enough because we're afraid. We're afraid to have these hard conversations. And I get it, I'm a white lady. I grew up in Ohio. I haven't been a lot of places, but I still understand pressure, right? I understand that. I grew up in a family that didn't talk about things. I learned unhealthy habits based on that, but I also felt the need to be pretty, to get the best grades, to be the best at sports. I felt this pressure, and I don't know if it was from my parents. I don't know if it's from society. I don't know where it necessarily came from, but I can tell you that I felt that pressure. And because I had really unhealthy skills, because I didn't learn them, because I pretended everything was fine when it wasn't fine, when I got to college, I began to experiment with drugs and alcohol. And so this December, I'll have nine years clean, which I'm super proud of, Woo right? But I went through a really dark period of my life where I wanted to be numb, right? I didn't know how to deal with the things that were happening. I didn't know who I could talk to about it. I didn't want to let people down. And so what I did is I wanted numb. I wanted not to feel. And once you use drugs and alcohol to be numb, to not feel, to shut your brain off, to not think about things, when you have to give that up, whether that's consequences, whether that's family saying stuff to you, it's very hard the first steps away from. <laughs> Hi, everybody. Salam alaikum. My name is Jabro. I'm going to be speaking a bit English and Somali. Um, thank you, everybody that spoke um, and talking about mental health. I feel like today was an appropriate conversation to have um, because I felt like growing up with seven siblings, um, my parents migrated 
to this country in 1997, I believe. And a fun fact, my mom was actually pregnant with me. Um, and, you know, I, I could just remember we lived in Kentucky. And it was really hard for my parents not only to provide, but like Ifra and everybody that talked, um, they said struggle. They had to struggle. They didn't have a reliable car. They didn't have anything. But my message to you guys today is speak out or forever hold your silence. But if you hold your silence, just know that you're, you're shutting out and like you're, you're, you're going to keep it inside forever. Um, I think we all need to do these conversations more often because I feel like we struggle as a community. Like whether you're black, white, Caucasian, we struggle as a community. And I feel like growing up, everybody has anxiety, right? Some bit of it. <laughs> and I feel like just growing up with anxiety, um, it was really hard for me to cope. Um, I'm also a YouTuber. I do YouTube on the side. Um, but um, so I think my channel, it was really brought up to me by people just being like, you've been through so much, and how did you overcome it? And the reason I overcome it was, yes, I followed the Quran. I had spirituality, and I, I believed in myself. But I couldn't do it without my friends and my family. So you know, you really have to believe in yourself. And one of the things that I really want to do, and if anybody can help me with, if I know we're friends on Instagram and everything, is to open a rehabilitation center maybe, and maybe have a coping book for everybody to really acknowledge what they're going through in their life. Um, I'm not going to make this too long, um, but I feel like sometimes we mislead each other with our own within. Like, we, we can't even trust our neighbors sometimes to tell them how you're feeling. But back to the conversation about mental health, I feel like we all suffer from it silently. And um, yeah, so like I said, my name is Jabril. I hope everybody takes a part of this day very well. And just educate yourself. And I think for our families, uh, we don't really educate ourselves amongst our own selves. So I feel like this uh, a message a day like this more people come you were you really have this you will inspire people so that's my message so yeah okay so my name is Samaya I don't usually do this I'm like the most shyest person ever <laughs> um, so I would talk about mental health because um, 2020 I would always think I would always see kids and be like oh what's wrong with them no offense that's what I used to do <laughs> But now I understand like these kids are going through a lot and especially me too because growing up I came to the United States when I was one so basically I'm American. Um, I don't know that much Somali. I used to always get made fun of every single time like the older Somali communities used to always be like oh what's wrong with your daughter? Oh why is your daughter wearing pants? Oh why is your daughter going out late? And you know and my mom used to like be like oh and put that pressure on us you know but my mom is a single mom um so she's trying her best but then also i we as kids we always put our pressure and our trauma on our mom knowing our parents knowing that they have trauma themselves you know so when we're growing up like elementary middle school we're wondering where's our parents in the um, at parent teacher conference, where's our parents in our basketball games? So I'm gonna give up. Ain't nobody gonna be proud of me, you know? Um, being the first one to graduate, I kind of gave up senior year, you know? N not signing up for colleges because our parents, our American parent, our children, like American um, parents are always encouraging their children while Somali parents always bring our children down, like, oh, why can't you be so-and-so? Because so-and-so went to OSU, Maine. Why are you at Columbus State? Um, for example, too, cars, like, you know, you, 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 we mess up. We mess up. But what we have to do is get up. We have bad friends that lead us to bad things in our life, but who cares? We have to brush it off 
and keep it moving because that friends, if they were really your friends, they will help you, they'll encourage you. They won't push you down, they won't bash you, you know? Um, so I'm here to tell you that mental health is a real thing. Um, you should never judge for any, anything that ever happens to anyone else, never judge, because you could be put in that position. So also like credit. Um, I heard that um, Habib Ramla, she was talking about credit. Our parents don't really warn us about credit. They don't warn us like, yo, you're gonna literally fuck up your shit, like calm down, like, they, cause they don't know. And we're always bl blaming our parents, but now I see, I'm, I'm about to turn 22 next month. Um, I'm a, yeah, so I'm actually happy that I am 22 and I'm not in jail, you know? I'm not, I'm doing okay, even though I dropped out of college, it, I'm gonna go back. Even though I messed up in life, I'm gonna be back. It, it doesn't matter. <laughs> we, mess, we all mess up, you guys. There's always second chances in life. So, and even the drug and alcohol situations, our parents are very blind. It's really simple. Like, I feel like you can see when your parents, <laughs> you can see when your kid is like high as hell. <laughs> so why can't you see it? I don't, I don't get it. Because they're not there, right? They're working, they're working on their self, right? Exactly. Exactly. It's all, it's all in your, like, I feel like it's all a working process. We should all also encourage our and educate our parents. Hey, this is my struggles, and this is what we need to accomplish. It's pretty. It's teamwork also, and yeah. Thank you so much, Ramla. It's a pleasure to be here this evening. I'm with Columbus Public Health. And I'm Dr. Maishika Roberts, Community Engagement Strategic Advisor. And we have a couple of staff here as well as the Addiction Services staff here. Could you guys stand and just wave, please? Yes, thank you. Um, so I just wanted to give greetings on behalf of Dr. Roberts, who's the Commissioner of Health for the City of Columbus. And to also say that why it is so important that we engage and we hear from you. My favorite part of any program is hearing from the youth. So everybody who spoke tonight, I just wanted to say how powerful your words were, right? Yes. Um, so may this not be the last time we gather to talk about these important issues. We need to hear from you about what programs you think are important and what services you need to be put in touch with. So thank you so much for allowing us to be part of this with you tonight. And I also want to say what a gift it was to hear of everybody's stories tonight as well. Thank you. Hi, I'm going to be here. Okay, I'm going to be here. Okay. I'm going to be here. I'm going to be here. I'm going to be here. Okay. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakat. I'm going to be here with Ibrahim Noor. I'm going to be here with the Afmaat of Columbus. داونتاون کا من تو وحنا هل کن اسکوگون نمی وحنا عصونتی اما نویه دی ما من رملا وحنا نویه دی ایفنت لگاگا هد لیو سومالی یوث کا و دلیره دو سومالی کا لگلا هد لیو وحنا لگلا هد لی منتل هالت کا یا وحیا با تراما دا اما وحیا با کود عیدت کا مرکم مسیج که هل کن اما من تو کی گذبی نیا وحیویان هویو اینک سومالی دو وحنا شیعیا إن المهوجة أي هوسو أيجان لحظان وعديان أين كو قيلين سفي عن أي لحظان هدي المهوجة أي كو أركا واحد بعتها مسج كانوا قد بيني على ليرة وحويان دليرة كل جين بتهدين واحد ضد بدن بيكون دعان وينجي نجوه الرياء ما ينجد دم بيا واحد شراء عاون رصاص بدن بيشراء هدي نقطة كلامبس بابليك هيلث هدي نقطة ميلا كلا رصاص كلا جب حيو فضلا عرس هذا عاون ويج بيشن إما كأكتوبر بلو جيجي وحاول دنتي أوفردو سومالي صدق قف أو سومالي أوفردو سو دنتي ما ها إن أقول دي متان أوفردوس هدي حتى دراج استعمال إنسان إن أقول دي متان ما ها مركب فضلا عاوي رادية هو ينك سومالي ده نوحن كبرنا يا إن عروت هذا هوسو أيجان يا أبيش سومالي ده أي المهوج أوردي أنا
بسم الله السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته وإن والله يا الدمان وإذا السلام يا ما شاء الله وحن آدوا ما تعلن يا ولا شيء رملا أو الصغة مقابل شيء برنامج كان ما أنت إن لأن يرد اللجوء يقلني والد كان اللجوء برا روشني آدي يا دمان وفر حسن هاي إن كسوق يبقله رونا هانتي إن ما شاء الله ولا لا لو مشى وحن نويا هذا سومالنا هاي حول ما بنجد نوم بوحان لكن قريها نوم بوحا عربة نو شوكتة ما شاء الله مرك عروتي إن لي لاليو إن لوعي قليو إن أنا العين دلنا يرى يا هذا مش كهذا الشيء إنك سوي لغة إنجليش كوه اللين هذا ندلنا يرى ذا سؤالي ويديا وحكم ذا ها مش ضدك أشاني بتاع المها كدي رجليان سو مالد ومحي المها وبهدلان أنا كنا وحوم لين يا دقم بينوت هاي إن هي بالبا كافي عن محاد أذية لوكو كوديجي ومعنى هذا تهاي إن دي رجلينه سيلمو هراء وجود قاقه لكن مرك الله في ريا عروت ود ماذا قربها كل الله تي أرنت أسي واحد وتهاي بهدل ما دي رجلسه لكن لوكا يسي جلسا إن أرنت أنا كوان تون كوان تون إن شاء الله برنامج كان يو برنامج كلا با نرملا يا أنا قد ما كود شقينا برنامج كلا نوحة ويا وحاسو بحي مالو قبلها سومالي ده لوجو قدو أو ده أشياني من أشيل كودك كجنع سدان ده سومالي أنا أشيل كودك كجنع سدان أرن تاسنا وأرن آد يا درونتي أو حنون بدن هو يو إنك سومالي ده أنا دي باتوكو أي والدين تا يعرور تينا ده إن إن غور لو فرتو إلمي هي أو لقى جنع سدو إلمي أنا وح وكفى إذا كلي وحوايا العق ما دام موسى هي سندروج دي وحابي وبهنا يا لو قدي يا هو يدن وكم مقيني هاي لو بربي قبل دي كاسو ده حيسا موبيل كاسو ده حيا مال وشر متقاند هذا هو نقص عن قنيا مال وكي من متقاند أيقونا ما هدد نارنتاس ربع علمه لكن سديباتا يكون حشران عدا يعوضان أو حشيك تان ما هيستان وحن آدي آد أرتشيني إن عن رنتي نقنه والدك وحلو شيء جنيه أو نارنتاس علمها جرب كوسيني أرنت أصلاً هذا هو أتهاج إن هاي ديار يعني إن هاي جد نوالو صاري وحن أدور تشينينا إن مر كاميرا دالينه جزاكم الله خير والسلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته. فرح فرح تقول أنا مفرح على عول سوى واحد يتقنين ما أنت ماشي حسوي ما أنا إن كودا هذا النوع mental health يو أوفر دوسك المها مركي داو عنان مثل دراجة استعمالان أي كل من كران ونورش هذا النفط هذا حليس يكون جاري كرتو وحن أنا جاي نجرك هذا لي تراما ذا وحي سامين بن عادن كي كل هذا حي وحي قفك أجر سين كرت قفك تراما مركو مرة على النورش حوقك عريريس أو وح سبورت سيستم ضد أو لش ضد فهم أي أو عاون أي وحي سنين مثل باتوين بدن أي كل عضو اللي جاي يابار تراما ذا اسمه كاس إن أي كل سامين سقفك إنه دراجة استعماله مثل سق وادي جس كوبانيو مركب حسن كهلينا وصيب دالين يرتا دالين يرتا ودن كان كورايو أي وارد دين توضا وحي كلا قبان كلا دقن دون دقمها كل دوان وحيس وحيكيني سايس هرم سكهرمان سكهرماش هذا سو حيكيني سامر كاس نادباتو إن كلا الله جي أبا إلما هاي نيس كبانيان أو بنانك جروجا outside جروجا أي محل يرادا دراجة مسوا حيستعمالان وحنك هذا النيت دراما ذا إنه كيني كرتو دراجة استعمال كم مس mental health عفمات كذي مس كحدا قف كهدو depression مس anxiety وقبل أي كوسا من كل هذا هاي إنه قف كاسنا ودراجة استعماله وحن آد أنا مهم أربعة أنا أوجا هذله دخنا هان وحن أنا عندها نضدك أو دراجة استعماله مس س هذا كدوان وحاس ماله ذا دخنا هان وتقنا إنه كل دخمة إنه يهين ضد هذا النولش كده عي وحن كهذا لينا علم يرى ولي أباهن قاعدين كن قفكو هدو يري هدو وين يوري وباهن يضد كيسة لكن سيبه وحن كهذا لينا ضد يرى هذه ولي قاعد تنا كجرا أو المهنة أو إن عن صور وين أو فهن سين وحن نولش هذا وحي سامين كل هذا هاي يصير هذا اللي صير بناي بناي يدخترين عن أو يرنا ما ها المها إن عن تورنا ما ها إن عن محل يرنا جروجا كفي جنا وكأرينا دبعت هذا وح ويسي ويسي بدنا عيسى مركب وحنكو فكرة مركز إن عن إن عن كوا ذا هذا لنا أرن تنكو مركز إن عن كوا ذا هذا لنا عن نهل مامن لبنا إن عن دبعت هذا سي وينينين وحاجروا حيال خارقوا ذا كل دقنا سمالي هان أو دبعت هذا سي ويني سيسا أو محل يرى هذا ب هذا سولوشن كين إن عن أصح لو حليو مركب إن عن كو فكرة دبعت هذا محل حلين كرا محل حلين أي إنفورميشن حلين أي عقل عقان بحلين أي وح 
حلناه حيل كورات وارد كيلمه سكر حيو الما هذا وحاضوت هاي الله رسين سهوي بعضوت هاي وحاضوت هاي you know جعل وحاضوت هاي safety you know safety مال أي نبت قلي أمني كدري مايان مركا هذا ماشي أمني جد جعل كي هوي هوي جعل كا يا أمني جا عاد كورجو بنانك كوب حسد عاد واحد قصة ماشي شوي قصة صورت قلي كرتا أو أنا مركا سطلا وحاضوت الما هنا كيت صدا جعل كوا هوي يا الما هنا كيت صدا لا هذا لا أقان يكل جعل يحرير كسر دوي يا كوفة هنسي وح عادي قاعد لربتيت وح عادي قاعد ما تقاضي كحيران يا مستقبل قاضي قفك من عندك وفكرة وكل فهمة يعني إنه تهي مستقبل كيس إنه في عن تهي أبنا عنك هقدرن دع دخل هذا وين قد عن قفك النارش كمود عن ولي مركز الجانس بقول لي هاي إسبدل وإيمان كرا إلما هو لا ليالو هاي سكفي جنا وده نقلان جونا وسمال ذي كبدن يا أو محل يرى سمال ذا مذا ومرة كيهين مرة مسلمين مسلم نمذا محل يرى ذا لوجد وياه مرك إلما هذا ذا بنا كوصي في جسوا ده واحد مرك كسيدة عاية هذا واسك قرن كرتين السلام عليكم السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته ما جاي وحال ده الرملة and we had the gunner had columbus ohio we had the gunner hello atten you said that so not and what i'm on to you because by in our hands to me you on also may you community yeah what i had to hide what i'm okay yeah but then or in three yeah but then or over those uh arura but then or where it could uncover coming yeah but then more color shake is the ego shake and the water the air come on or ah shame in a vein أو أه محل ده إن سلف كم فريس كده أو هاسو دعي إسكوف محل ده هاي كل سوني ده دي أو هاسو دعي هويون كده أي كبقة هيان إليهن هوي ده إن هذا وحسو شعن هذا ساس دعوة دي بعد أيام سو جاريس مركا تعس أي أول ده الشيء إن عن هو شان قبته هاد إنت قف الله كل ما قف البق وجع لذي وين الرمان لكن ما يسمى إيمان ما قانا وح وإيمان لعيهن I think how many in a Hishon I am. I come back. I am in Ungol Hadu Samayo in Ayaga Sien in Omalayan. Ayaga Mosimin Arurtan. We have good children be at Kaldan. Another one can be at Kaldan. Had the core Shah Muhadrena Uhudai. Mihi Louis Van Kahere, Gami Van Kahere, but Van Kudene used to be Kugarin, Meshakaneso, Mesh and Jogno Sile Utalo, and all Nal Noire.